Throughout history, one of the most brutal execution methods was someone being ripped and torn apart by horses. It was reserved in France for the most serious of criminals, who attempted to assassinate the king. However, it was completely barbaric, and some would have their four limbs chained to four horses, before the animals were driven away in different directions. But this was also used in Poland too, as in 1620, a man named Mikhail Piarkowski tried to assassinate the king, Sigismund III. The assassination attempt ultimately failed, but it was brutal in its attack and how it was carried out. But for this, Piekarski the assassin paid the ultimate price. Join us today to look at the Polish man who was ripped apart by horses. And to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Mikhail Piekarski was born around 1597. And as a child, he was involved in an accident where he was severely injured. He took a hit to the head and it's said from this moment he suffered mentally and was known for being incredibly depressive and he was also known for having mood swings. Others described him as an eccentric, but as he got progressively ill, he became more isolated. He was also banned from managing the estates he had been given and inherited, and this caused him great upset and further frustration. However, Francois Ravaillac, in May 1610, successfully assassinated King Henry IV of France, and Pikarski, who at the time was around 13, then decided to take action. He decided that his target would be Sigismund III of Poland, the long reigning Polish king. But despite being a young man, he then spent the next 10 years waiting and coming up with a plan to kill the Polish king. He also took part in rebellions against Sigismund and throughout his life he stayed a Calvinist. At the time, all Protestants and Calvinists were being targeted by Sigismund and the Catholic Church and a number were being persecuted heavily. There were rumours around Polish society that the Radzvili family were playing a rather important role in plotting to murder the king due to the religious persecution, and this family in particular were very strongly Protestant, and the king grew weary of them. But the attack that Mikhail Piakowski was planning for ten years took place on the 15th of November 1620. It occurred at 9am in the morning, and Sigismund was attending mass inside St John's Cathedral in Warsaw. The king was joined by a number of his guards, and also a number of the members of the royal court, and they were walking in a small procession to the cathedral from the royal castle. It was connected to the church by a narrow passage, which was usually out of reach for locals. Some historians claim that Sigismund was accompanied by only a few close advisers, and that he was very casual with his security detachment. As the group got to the end of the corridor, Mikhail Pikarski appeared, after somehow gaining access to the corridor. He leapt out and then stabbed the king twice, using a light war axe, known as a shechem. He hit the king in the back, and then in the cheek, and then hit him in the arm. He was quickly overpowered by guards or members of the detachment who shielded the king. Prince Vladisor then hit Michal with his sabre, as he was being arrested and seized. But chaos broke out, and many believed that the king had been murdered, and his clothes were heavily stained in blood. The locals believed that the city was being invaded, and they began to panic. However, five days after the attack, the parliament had already sentenced Mikhail Pikarski to death, without a trial. He was charged and found guilty of regicide, which was a killing or attempted killing of the king. But this was one of the most serious charges, and Pikarski did not deny this at all. He claimed that he hated the king, and he offended the court-martial, and also the jury that were there to simply sit and listen to the proceedings. Pikarski ranted and raved about the royal family, and his hatred and words led to his land and estates being confiscated, and also his native village of Binkovis was to be burned to the ground. But this was later saved, and was given to someone who helped Sigismund during the attack. But the execution was to be one of the most serious and brutal methods of execution used throughout history. He was to be ripped apart by horses, in the same manner that the regicide who killed the French king was. Ravilliac's execution was described as, He was condemned to be tortured with red-hot pincers on four limbs and on each breast. His wounds were to be sprinkled with molten lead and boiling oil, and his body was then to be torn in pieces by four horses, the remains being subsequently burned. It was this same fate 
that Pekarsky, who almost idolised Raviak, would face. The execution took place on the 27th of November 1620 in Warsaw. Pekarsky was driven around Warsaw on a cart, and his body was then handed over to the executioner. On the cart, the executioner tore up his body using heated pliers while he screamed in front of the huge crowd. He was then after this placed on a platform in an area near the old town which was known as the Devil's Den. His hand was then cut off and was burned in front of him. Following this, as the torture continued and his screams persisted to be heard, the executioner tied his arms and legs to horses and then these were driven off in different directions. After this, his body was completely dismembered and there was very little left of the man that tried to kill the Polish king. There is a popular Polish saying today which translates as to Blavilak Pikarski during torture, as before his execution, he confessed his sins in a confusing and babbling manner. He was delirious and just admitted to all his crimes, but Mikhail Piakowski was a dangerous man who tried to kill the Polish king using a huge weapon, which was a light war axe. If he'd used a smaller and quicker weapon, such as a dagger, and got closer to the king, then he would likely have been more successful in his attack upon Sigismund III. He was a man who had a number of issues following the accident, and he became obsessed with the fact he had to kill the Polish king, like his idol had done in France to the French king a decade before. There are questions over his attack and how he managed to get close to the king, but ultimately he was subjected to a brutal and shocking execution, which has gone down in history as one of the worst and most horrifying. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.